TheDailyMass.com. Experience the Roman Catholic Mass from historic St. Louis Cathedral every day on TheDailyMass.com. His love anywhere in the world. Good evening, I'm Sarah McDonald. And I'm Jason Angelette. Welcome to Issues in Faith and welcome back, I know. Sarah McDonald from did, Maternity Leave. Did I pick a good week to come back? I know, the, what? <laughs> you picked the best week. It was awesome, such a wonderful we have, opportunity. We have been so blessed, I have to admit, I did a little bit of work when um, Pope Benedict XVI announced his resignation mm -hmm. and I was very happy that I would be returning back to the office. Not happy to return back to the office and leave my baby, but oh, sure. in terms of um, being able to come back to work in time for So how is mommy, family. baby, family? How are y'all doing? Everybody's great. Praise I have a beautiful God. little girl. Yeah. Um, Eloise. Eloise. Claire, who y'all introduced for me. And Claire, by the way, is the patron saint of television. Yes. And so we, it was very exciting to um, to bring her into our family. Praise and um, her little her big brother loves her. Her And she's just... Nathan is uh, being a good big brother. He is. He's a Fantastic. very good big brother. Not jealous of the split time between you and he? He's learning. Good. He's learning. <laughs> He's learning. But um, we have a very important, special show. Yes, this is a very special show. Love, love what's going on in the church. Very excited. Good time to be Catholic. That's right. And we have two very special guests. We have Peter Finney, who is the editor in chief of the Clarion Herald, and Father Fitzgerald, president of Jesuit High School here in New Orleans. We are going to be speaking, um, obviously, about the election mm -hmm. of Pope Francis. And a distinction for our viewers: he is not Francis the first. He right. is Francis. He will be, <laughs> as uh, Father Lombardi at the Vatican said, he'll be Francis the first, and we have a Francis the <laughs> second. So. So um, it's very exciting, a lot of firsts mm -hmm. in this election, and so I, I want to start uh, with you, Father. Where were you when you when you heard about the news, well, and perhaps you should explain exactly why the, the Jesuit connection is mm -hmm. so important. Well, in that uh, Pope Francis is a Jesuit, mm -hmm. uh, it was entered the Society of Jesus in Argentina, was ordained a Jesuit priest, was provincial in Argentina until John Paul II named him to be a bishop, and then Archbishop of Buenos Aires. Uh, I was actually part of a fairly prosaic meeting planning out next year's school calendar. <laughs> uh, luckily, one of our assistant principals had the foresight to have her iPad, you know, queued in, mm -hmm. uh, DWTN, and then, you know, when all of a sudden that the doors are opening, we all stop, gather around, That's and great. listen, uh, and it was a moment of great joy. Mm -hmm. We just showed a picture of you and, and mm -hmm. that big oh, yeah. smile mm -hmm. on your face that, uh, as you saw, a brother Jesuit. Right. Um, and even more yeah. importantly, a good and holy priest. Amen. A good and holy priest. And, and that's such an important um, uh, distinction that you might be Pope, you might be an Archbishop, might be a Bishop. You are a priest first. Mm -hmm. You're a priest of God. And um, Peter, where were you? We were in our newsroom. In fact, we had a, a big list. Uh, you know how you do the your, your, po your paper Pope Billy uh, uh, <laughs> list. Right. We had the, the top 16 lists, of course, he wasn't on the list, mm -hmm. and uh, my old my old paper, New York Post, had a had, had a headline that said, "Call it the Sweet Sistine, not the Sweet Sixteen. <laughs> and but uh, Cardinal was not there, and uh, although he was known by many people, and obviously, uh, you know, was a was had been really recommended back in 2005, mm -hmm. but uh, it was a. Uh, it, to me, it was it was surprising because we went we were looking as soon as we heard the name that we went to the Google and that was it. Mm -hmm. I think we all went to the Google. Yes. I think we yeah. were just frantically going online, going on the internet, and trying to find out anything that we could find out on this. Uh, this what we find, more that I read, the more impressed and yeah. just taken back by his his simplicity, but his love and his faithfulness to the church. It's incredible. Right, and not to make light of the situation, but it's kind of funny. There were actually betting lines on <laughs> on who oh, yeah. would be the next pope. Well, Whoever. I think a pope during March Madness. It, it, right, <laughs> I mean, it's just a frame of mind, and you know, whoever, if anybody put money on him, you, you you probably made a good bit. So uh, you owe some of that tithing to the church. I, right. you know that yeah. I think he was thirty-three to one on PattyPower.com. So you know, yes. yeah, there you right. go. So. <laughs> leave it to the so. sportscaster or the sports <laughs> writer to know the odds. But um, you, we talked about, and as Jason said, we are the more we learn about this mm -hmm. man who was not very familiar. You, Father, were saying even as a Jesuit never met him, granted right. he's from South America, and it, it's a good degree of separation before right. you know anyone who would mm -hmm. know him. That's correct. So, um, and of course, he's a little bit older, and as right. a bishop, you get a little bit removed from the day-to-day -day right. life, but what are we, what are, who is this man? What mm -hmm. have we, um, who have, what have we learned about him in the last 24 hours? Well, I think one of the things we've learned is that we have a very zealous pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's someone whose main goal is 
to bring and announce the word of Christ and the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, in charity and love to his people. And I think there's that connection, you know, the things we're hearing of, you know, riding public transportation, living in a very simple uh, accommodations. But I think that's all a good sign of the pastoral zeal that you have, of someone whose goal is the sacraments are key to the life of the church. Mm. The message, Jesus loves you, is mm -hmm. key to the life of the church. Amen. The justice, the charity, all together, mm -hmm. the you know, great corpus of the church is teaching to translate that into, and we see this in the lives of the individual people that we meet day by day. And I think there's just that pastoral zeal that has characterized him, especially as Archbishop of Buenos Aires. And there was so much speculation from the media, and <coughs> this was very different with a resignation as opposed to a death. Yes, right. um, it allowed for so much to sort of build up to the election of the Pope. And I think that's so important what you say. Everyone said, he was so unexpected, we're so mm -hmm. surprised. Well, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit works in mysterious ways, mm -hmm. and he sees what the church needs, not right. what CNN need, says mm -hmm. we need, or NBC says we need, or the BBC says we need, in terms of different things. But I think that's so important. Mm -hmm especially as uh, we move into this uh, year of renewal or continue through yes. the year of faith and renewal and the new evangelization. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not Catholic, I think the, the, these little signs that, that Father Raymond had just talked about, you know, he went to, he stopped his car today and paid his bill at the hotel. We know he pays his bills now. Right. You know, so it's, <laughs> but I mean, a non-Catholic seeing that, not being Catholic, they're saying, wow, there's, there's, there's something a little mm -hmm. bit different about him, uh, that uh, it, it, a, very, a simplicity, a humility mm -hmm. that, uh, mm -hmm. that is out there. And I think uh, that's important for people to, to see. And, and we uh, saw that, I think, at the very beginning. Exactly. When, Absolutely. Uh, when he, he walks out and he's dressed very simply. Mm -hmm. You know, and then at the same time, before he gives his papal blessing, right. he's asking everyone to pray for him. Well, that was really one of the marvelous things. Is his first two acts as pope. Yeah. His first, let's say, some prayers for my predecessor, That's right. Right. and then leads eight hundred thousand people in prayer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then really presents himself. I need your prayers. Yeah. And that wonderful scene in which he's bowing very yeah. humbly before the people whom he is to shepherd, and a friend of mine who was at there at the. Uh, announcement said, you know, it's not often you watch hundreds of thousands of people grow instantly silent yeah. and pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that speaks volumes of what his leadership already is looking like. Mm -hmm. It was the New York Times this morning, they, they, that was the exact picture they used on the front page of, of him really? bowing and, and, and asking the people for their blessing. Wow. And uh, so that was, a, it was a powerful moment. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so. unlike anything um, we've seen recently, mm -hmm. and of course there was uh, in John Paul II mm -hmm. such great joy, and in right. Benedict such great joy, yes. and he was very, he seemed very meek very and mild, yes. and um, really sort of taking it all in, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit shocked and mm -hmm. in awe of yeah. what had just yes. happened to him, but the presence to be able to take that time to, to pray mm -hmm. and to really make it not a, a, a pep rally, but really right, right. draw from what is truly the center of our faith mm -hmm. in prayer and bringing the spirituality mm -hmm. into the papacy. I, I think it, it is a, an incredible um, testament to the, him as a pope helping us as Catholics focus on our spirituality. Mm -hmm. And I think with him that sense of Christ is the center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's Jesus Christ. That's right. That's why we're here. That's all we have to give to the world. That's the great gift God has given to us. And it's no more and certainly no less than the presence of Christ. And Him um, as a servant mm -hmm. of, of Christ right. and as other servants. people. Yes. And mm -hmm. um, there was a picture on Facebook of Him as Archbishop of, Argent of Buenos Aires washing the feet on mm -hmm. Holy Thursday, not of other priests or mm -hmm. of any other church dignitaries, but the most vulnerable mm -hmm. of the community there. And then you see pictures of him with young infants yes. um, and kissing the feet of young infants and the work he's done. You've, we've seen the pictures of him on the bus using mm -hmm. public transportation. Right. And it's, it's really interesting because those of us who work with the church know um, that you know, very often when you're working with a number of cardinals and mm -hmm. can making doing, working those logistics, that it can be difficult. Mm -hmm. And so for him to, as a cardinal, to to really remove himself from that and truly always, always see himself as a servant is such an extraordinary example right. for all of us, particularly the young church mm -hmm. who has such a zeal for the faith as it is and, and coming up with a different um, kind of energy at this time. I think it's an excellent example. Well, I think it's what you said earlier, you know, the key thing with him is, yes, he's been Archbishop Cardinal, now Pope, he's a priest. 
Mm -hmm. And that, you know, in the ordination rite where it says, imitate the example of Christ, the good shepherd who came not to be served, but to serve. It seems to me this is a man who's taken that to heart and who lives that. Very good. Well, we're going to take a short break Great. and we'll be right back. The science of learning is an imperfect one, but Louisiana Catholic schools have consistently instituted a formula for success. An astonishing 95% of Catholic school students go on to college, and last year they brought with them over $185 million in scholarship awards. Shouldn't you invest in success and the confident leaders of tomorrow? Louisiana Catholic schools in a class of their own. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. Habemus Papam, we have a Pope. We just saw Archbishop Amen as he uh, welcomed everyone mm -hmm. to the massive Thanksgiving that was held yesterday evening at St. Louis Cathedral. We had a couple hundred people there, which mm -hmm. was very good for a short yeah. notice to yeah. get down to the quarter at 5.30 right. in the evening. Find a parking spot. And yeah. find a parking spot <laughs> after park, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's very challenging. Miracle, right? <laughs> um, but um, we have a Pope. He is Pope Francis. He is a Jesuit priest. Mm -hmm. He is the first um, priest from North America, or from the Americas, yes. to be named Pope, um, and he's the first non-European ever mm -hmm. to be named Pope. And um, I want to talk a little bit about what he, why he picked the name Francis, the first mm -hmm. Francis that we have had as, as a Holy Father. He made yeah. reference to that today. Right, and I think in many ways, you know, it's one of those wonderful names like. John, Paul, Benedict, <laughs> right. that really covers a lot of territory. It's my dad's name yes. and, and my Which grandfather's also name. Very so. good. You know, is that you clearly have St. Francis of Assisi, one of the most beloved saints throughout history, a man of great simplicity, poverty, humility, mm -hmm. who just sort of radiates even to the point of you know, bearing the wounds of Christ yeah. in himself, the person of Jesus. But then one of the key points there is that Francis in the dream has this sense of being called by Christ to rebuild my church. Mm -hmm. And in his homily today um, in the Sistine Chapel, Pope Francis uh, you know, basically said, I've got three points, and luckily in Italian they all started with C, so it's nice, <laughs> you know, caminare, construire, confessare, you know, to be on pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. And he used camino a lot in his, in his opening remarks on uh, the day of his election, but then construe it to build. Yeah. But with both of this, uh, we're walking, yes. We yeah. can walk anywhere we want, but we walk with Christ, with the cross of Christ, right. to build. What do we build on? The stone that is Christ. Right. And then to confess. If we don't confess Jesus Christ, if we don't proclaim that, yeah. we're doing nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it really was a sense of, I think his point is, Christ and his cross mm -hmm. is our sole glory. Yeah. And that, I think, very much gets to the heart of something Francis of Assisi would have understood. Very much so. And, and um, the Archbishop Amen has spoken um, in the last 24 hours about the idea of that whole rebuilding and mm -hmm. Pope Francis seeing himself as a tool in the church's mm -hmm. renewal because obviously we have faced some challenges mm -hmm. in the last couple of years, last couple decades in terms of management and crisis and different things like that and scandal even. Mm -hmm. And so we do need the spiritual renewal amongst all of our people. And, and Peter, you were able to speak with the Archbishop sure. um, a couple of times yesterday. He was excited. Of course, he, he was looking up uh, you know, information on him just like everyone else yeah. was, but you know, to, to the more he found out about him, the more excited he got. And he, he mentioned, um, you know, this, the new evangelization, which was so important to, to John Paul and to Benedict. And, mm -hmm. and he sees uh, Pope Francis as continuing that because he knows how necessary it is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think 
it, it goes back almost to the France, you know, preach the gospel and necessary use words. Yes. I mean, he, he is a person who, uh, within his own uh, lifestyle, has shown the, to the world, you know, that he is a, a humble servant. And I think that that touches not only Catholics and maybe fallen away Catholics, but but the whole the whole world that's willing to see this. So uh, they're used to seeing somebody way up on a pedestal, and and this this is a person who. Uh, you know, is 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 not is not that kind of a person. So, it's. I think it attracts it attracts attention mm -hmm. and it attracts, you know, believers back to the church. Mm -hmm. Pope and Paul the six uh, mm -hmm. said that, uh, and then actually Pope Benedict the sixteen quoted this is that modern man listens more willingly to a witness and versus mm -hmm. a teaching. Mm -hmm. If they listen to a teacher, right. it's because of a good witness. And I think that's the beauty that we're going to see in Pope Francis because we have already seen in this as a, as a cardinal, as a bishop, as a priest, this witness of his love and fidelity for Christ and his church that he. He shows this uh, by his example, and uh, but also too being faithful to all the doctrines of the right. church. That we have mm -hmm. someone who's a strong man, a strong conservative of of, of, of the truth, but at the same time very uh, much out there and giving mm -hmm. of himself and love to the witness of uh, that faith that we're called to live. And that um, also we we do want to make note as well for many people who are familiar with the, the Jesuit order, the mm -hmm. Society of Jesus. We we see. Uh, Pope Francis emulating St. Francis of Assisi, but there's another important Francis right. in Francis his, <laughs> that's right. right. <laughs> Why don't you tell us well, a little bit, Father, about the Society of Jesus and the Jesuits and, and the charism that you all have in Well, I'm thinking that's the right word, that the Jesuits, the Society of Jesus, like any religious order, is a group that exists to serve Christ and His Church, the people of God, with a particular spirit, a particular gift, a particular charism. And for St. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, that charism got to availability and obedience. Mm. That the society was created to be free to go anywhere the Holy Father would see us as useful wow. to preach the Word of God, to spread the sacraments, to be witnesses to Christ. And so, for example, when as a Jesuit, you know, the then Father Bergoglio was told by John Paul II, my will for you is to be Archbishop of Buenos Aires. The mm -hmm. response was a free, yes, yeah. your holiness. And I think it's that same obedience that has brought him to accept this new role in the church with that zeal for the good of souls, mm -hmm. for the greater glory of God, and that willingness to do whatever it takes to go wherever, a sort of openness to, with God's grace, we can do anything. Without God's grace, we can do nothing. Mm -hmm. But with that, with the love of Christ, that compels us forward. And I think that's so interesting that you'd say that some of the challenges the church is facing requires somebody who's willing to sort of lead the charge mm -hmm. with that grace, um, right. especially in a world where our, you know morals are being questioned and mm -hmm. uh, we're telling the church is being told, oh, you need to modernize. Right. Someone who's willing to defend that truth and go with God's grace mm -hmm. into the battle, that, that's, a, that's a hefty responsibility. It and, is. and I think it's one that's very much from the vision if one receives through, say, the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, mm -hmm. the sort of foundational Jesuit experience that a young Jesuit in his first year it takes 30 days of silent reflection mm -hmm. to do this. And it is a life-changing experience. Not so much in what one does, but how one looks at the world. Mm -hmm. And basically seeing that I am called to know, mm -hmm. love, and follow Jesus. Amen. And to do that with generosity as God has been generous to each one of us. And I think that opens up literally a whole world of possibilities as Francis Xavier discovered as he was summoned to go from his native Europe, first to India, then to Japan, and died with the hope, I want to bring the word of Jesus to China. So the great, you know, the world, you know, another day, another country, that sort of, mm -hmm. but there's no horizon too small. And, that's, and it's interesting too as we face some challenges with China mm -hmm. uh, yeah. as in the world that maybe this is um, another sign of saying the Lord is here, He has mm -hmm. come, the Holy Spirit is here, He's going to be powerful through our, our new Pope and through uh, us as Catholics. Yeah, as, as the faithful we're called to, I think I'm already, in, I mean, already inspired by this holy, well, this holy man. I, I feel mm -hmm. like, um, you know, you, you hear, uh, this, I saw the pictures online of him kissing the feet, like you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. of I think he went to, a, it was an HIV AIDS uh, hospice yes. center, mm -hmm. and 12 of the patients there, he's washing and kissing their mm -hmm. feet, and uh, with that love, that love for Christ, 
Christ and, and, and bringing that Christ, that Christ message of love that's transforming, that you see that transform in his heart and is transforming. I mean, it's, right. it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, there's a wonderful story of him as Archbishop of uh, one of the cleaning ladies there who had a number of children who hadn't been baptized. She was a widow. The children were by several fathers, and she was saying, I want to get them baptized. I can't afford, you know, all the things she thought. He said, none of that's necessary. Did a brief catechesis, and he said, come by you know, the chapel. He baptized all the children, at the end of which he says, oh, you made me feel so important. He says, what have I got to do with it? It's Christ who makes you important. Amen. And that, I think, is his message. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, again, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back and talk about some more local reaction um, to the election of Pope Francis. Never forget our best teachers, the ones who do so much more than teach. They inspire and insist we bring our best in everything we do. We find those mentors in our Catholic schools. It's why Catholic school graduates consistently go on to college, land better jobs, embrace faith, and lead. Louisiana Catholic Schools, in a class of their own. My sisters and brothers, we gather this afternoon with great joy as we have seen history unfolding before our very eyes, a day of many firsts. The first pope from South America, from Argentina, the first pope who is a Jesuit, the first pope to take the name Francis, and the first pope to call his predecessor on the phone and to say hello. <laughs> and the first pope to have his predecessor watch the conclave end and him being presented to the world on television. I'm quite sure that 600 years ago, when the last pope retired, there was no such thing as the phone or television. So we have seen unfold before our very eyes so much history for which we are grateful to God. And Peter, you and I were both at that Mass yesterday evening with Archbishop Amen. It was a beautiful service. Uh, Sister Julia from the Pauline mm -hmm. Sisters was, a, was the cantor, and oh, she provided so yeah. much. Um, and you were able to talk to a number of people as we as Mass was letting out yeah. about their reaction. Well, I spoke to Sister Julia, and she's got a beautiful voice, and she was there with Sister uh, Tracy. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the afternoon when the, uh, the, the white smoke comes out, mm -hmm. they were watching uh, in front of their TV set, and they told me that uh, they said, Sat down, they, they sat down, but then they wanted to get closer to the TV screen because, and they started, they started inching forward. And they finally they knelt in front of the television set yeah. because they wanted to be close enough to get uh, Pope Francis's blessing when he when he did give it. And so she she just exuded, uh, you know, she 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 also said that mm -hmm. the most impressive thing to to her was when he bowed down mm -hmm. and asked for the blessing of people, and she thought that was just such a wonderful. Uh, a wonderful sign that he is the servant of the servant of God. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, the se uh, many seminarians were at uh, the Mass, mm -hmm. and about 90 of them uh, sat in the community room watching it on TV. And Father Jim Wayner, the, the rector of the seminary, said they were so excited it was almost like being at a Saints game. They were, you know, no, it, it was, was to, to, to see what happened. And uh, so they were, you know, he said it's, it, when when Benedict announced his resignation temporarily, the seminarians felt like like many fatherless, you know. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. but now with Pope Francis coming. One of the seminarians, Michael Richard from Lafayette, said he's really looking forward to East to, to Holy Week because that's when the Pope normally writes a little message mm -hmm. to uh, priests to, and to the seminarians, mm -hmm. and he wants to know what Pope Francis expects uh, of yeah. of his seminarians now. So he's really looking forward to that. Well, what can we expect in the Clarion coming up? Well, we uh, we had just finished our issue. Of course, we didn't have a word <laughs> about, <laughs> and the same so we thing said, to us, Peter. "That's right." Why we're so, but we did. We scrambled a little bit, and last night we were able to put together just a little four. 
page uh, spread on uh, on the new pope, and it gives really some basic information about him and some of the local reactions. So at least uh, people will have in their churches this weekend. They'll have the they'll have the old clarion, which had the betting line, had had nobody, <laughs> and then they'll have the they'll have the real deal. Yes, exactly. So uh, you maybe take both home uh, uh-huh. from church when you leave uh, on Sunday. Definitely, and Father, you mentioned you were in your mundane meeting, <laughs> but uh, your, your boys were in exams, so they were not on correct. campus at right. the time. What were the Jesuit students? What was their what was the atmosphere like? Well, in it was Jesuit interesting this walking around before school the next day because again it was kind of in between. Mm-hmm. Are we ready for calculus? And what do you think about the new pope? So right, it's kind right, of right. A, uh, interesting back and forth, and we'll hope the uh, papal blessing, you know, has good effect in, yeah. in their exams. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think there was a real sense of a number of things. Number one, the history of it, because remember, for our students, they were anywhere between five and nine right. the last time this happened. So That's this right. is, you know, sort of the first sense of at a stage in their life where they're able to understand you know, the yeah. significance of this. Perfect. And then, you know, the fact that he was a Jesuit was sort of got all the questions of, well, what does that mean? What are the implications of this? What is that, you know, and it was just a wonderful learning moment. Mm -hmm. But I think also as you get deeper into it, because we have at our daily mass that was offered, you know, by the Holy Father as he assumed office and we number of students were at that, really a sense of, well, what's he calling us to as a church? And yeah. I think the fact that his first actions were those of prayer mm-hmm. are key because, you know, as our mission is to form men of faith and men for others. Mm-hmm. And I think when you look at you know, Pope Francis and his life that has brought him to this point, you see one in which fidelity, faith, service to others come together in one coherent person. And, and Peter is also a, a Jesuit high school graduate, <laughs> and um, I, I was joking earlier on um, that I received some text messages from some of my friends who were Jesuit <laughs> graduates, all very, very proud um, <laughs> that the new Pope was a Jesuit and that, and that he had his his roots here. And mm-hmm. I think that well, his roots in the Jesuit order, and I think that's important. And I like how you've sort of closed those last comments about creating men for others, mm-hmm. forming men for others. Mm-hmm. Um, that is could almost be what you the exemplification of what you saw mm-hmm. in Pope Francis's first public appearance. Mm-hmm. He was there to be a man for others. Yeah. I think because he's a man of God. Because he's exactly. a man of God, right. exactly. And I think this is going to be a, an extremely graced time for the church. Mm-hmm. Well, we are very uh, short on time. Or this 30 minutes went by really fast. Yeah, but uh, I'm going to get some very, very quick closing mm-hmm. thoughts from, from each one of our guests tonight. You mentioned Facebook. Uh, they, they had three, a three shot of, of Pope John Paul II doing this at, at the balcony, mm-hmm. and Pope Benedict was kind of like like that. And then you had Pope Francis, the, the meek. The, the meek the, but you know, he is he's a man of meekness, but he's also not, he's a man who has made very difficult decisions. Not afraid to speak out in Argentina mm-hmm. about the injustice uh, socially. So mm-hmm. it's gonna, it's it's a wonderful mix. I'm just really excited to see you know where where we're headed. The Father. And I think if you look at say the last uh, three popes, Francis Benedict. John Paul II, mm-hmm. you really do see a wonderful thing about the church. You would never mistake any of the two for one another. Mm-hmm. You know, that they're all each is his own individual person. But the message is the same. Right. The church is the same. That's There's right. a continuity there. There's a consistency going back to our Lord's work That's right. on through the centuries. But in every century, in every moment, in every time, it's how do we make this real now right. with our own gifts, our own personalities, and I think this is the time in which the Holy Spirit is working through Pope Francis. Well, That's Father right. and Peter, I want to thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And thank you, our viewers, for being with us tonight on this very special edition of Issues in Faith. We'll be back next week. Hope you join us again soon. Until then, God bless.